Polk, a racist tweet from Louisiana Congressman Clay Higgins has caused a lot of drama on the floor in the United States House. This is the tweet that, that was sent out uh, right here. Um, so if you see the tweet, man, talk about how pathetic uh, this particular tweet is. He says, um, LOL, these Haitians are wild, eating pets, voodoo, nastiest country in the Western Hemisphere, cults, slapstick gangsters, but damned if they don't feel all sophisticated now, filing charges against our president and VP, all these thugs better get their mind right and their ass out of our country before January 20th. Folks, that literally was posted not to his personal account. That was posted to his congressional account. Well, in the last hour, that absolutely ticked off members of uh, Congress, black members of Congress. At one point, a number of them were surrounding Clay Higgins, uh, including Congressman Byron Donalds. Not sure what his role was, Republican out of Florida. But Congressman Stephen Horsford demanded he take the tweet down, and he actually did. Horsford also went to the floor to try to get a censure motion against uh, Higgins. Uh, again, all this has been transpiring in the last hour. Of course, uh, it has been Donald Trump and J.D. Vance ramping up their attacks on Haitians in Springfield, uh, Illinois, especially at the Trump speech uh, just the other night. And so uh, was, I'm going to try to show you uh, what took place uh, on the floor. Uh, but uh, this has been going on, again, the whole back and forth. This is the tweet right here that, that started it all. Right here, this particular tweet right here, uh, this from, from Louisiana Congressman Clay Higgins. Um, I want to bring in, I'm going to go to my panel right now. I want to bring them in uh, also. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to show you what Donald Trump had to say at his rally in uh, Indiana, Pennsylvania about Haitians in Springfield. Kamala has illegally flown in more than a half a million migrants, right? When she was saying, no, no, we don't want to do that. And she's got, these guys actually want these people in our country. It's not even believable. Working with left-wing nonprofits to inundate Pennsylvania communities, changing the character of small towns and villages all over our country and changing them forever. They will never be the same. They will never be. Do you think Springfield will ever be the same? I don't think. The fact is, and I'll say it now, you have to get them the hell out. You have to get them out. I'm sorry. <laughs> to get them out. Can't have it. Can't have it. They've destroyed it. It's terrible. It's terrible to say, and it's a tough thing to do. You know, you're going to take in some murderers and things, and you'll put them on the planes and the buses, and you're going to start doing it. Dwight Eisenhower holds the record. Believe it or not, he was a moderate kind of a guy, General Eisenhower, president. And he has the record. He, he couldn't stand people pouring into our country, and he took a lot and took them out. He's very strong on, on that. And we have to be strong. We have no choice because this is not sustainable by any country. There's no country that can do this. I mean, what were they thinking when they did it? Folks, that was last night. Uh, we have continued to see uh, how Republicans uh, have been targeting Haitian immigrants there in Springfield, Ohio. Now, because of that, the leader of a nonprofit representing the Haitian community invoked a private citizen's right to file charges against these MAGA Republicans. The Haitian Bridge Alliance made the move after the local prosecutor's inaction. Uh, Jolene Joseph, co-founder uh, and executive director of the Haitian Bridge Alliance, joins us right now to explain why they took action. Glad to have you here. Uh, first off, uh, I, before we get to your lawsuit, just your thoughts on this drama on the House floor where well, this Republican from Louisiana said those vile things about Haitian immigrants on his official congressional Twitter account. Well, and thank you so much for having me. It is a disgrace. That's basically what it is. For a congressional member to be able, to be allowed to post this type of vile, degradatory uh, uh, language against a group of people is unacceptable. So what we are seeing is, is just unacceptable on the floor of Congress, the floor of the People's House. Um, and uh, we're going to shorten in a, in a moment what Congressman Stephen Horsford 
had to say there on the floor. Uh, but again, what you see are Republicans who are picking up on this and they are attacking Haitian immigrants all across this country, making up things uh, and just saying vile, shameful, despicable, demeaning things about them. You know, this is not the first time we've had to deal with this type of language, this type of inhumane language. The way that they are able to weaponize whatever language they can and they want. They're able to create this type of narrative to attack the community that they thought did not have representation. But we had to show them that the Haitian American community, the black community in the United States will not stand for this type of narrative, will not stand for this type of harassment, will not stand for this type of attack. Because at the end of the day, we must hold them accountable. The words hold power, and we have to make sure that we stop them in the track. Uh, have, and, have, and have you been talking to the Haitian immigrants there in Springfield, what are they saying? Are they are they fearful? Uh, because before we saw we heard reports where where parents were keeping their kids home from school, afraid of them getting attacked. Yes, the reality is the commun the Haitian community in Springfield and around the country is terrified. We have our cohort we, we have been working with in Springfield for the past year to help them to get training, to help them revitalize the same economy that Mr. Trump just stood there and said they are, they are uh, uh, creating issues. The Haitian immigrants who are currently in Springfield are the reason why Springfield has been able to bring back their economy, to be able to bring back the culture, because those people have come to make sure that they prosper. That's what they have been doing in Springfield. So we continue to see how they are using our community, how they are creating those narratives for their own gains, literally using people's lives. My, well, and let me tell you a couple of stories. We have one of our clients in Springfield who told us that he went to, to work and one of his colleagues came to him and asked him, does he love to eat cat? We have another one who has a beloved cat and that really hurt him because his best companion is his beloved cat. But when you come and you traumatize the community, it cannot be without penalty. It cannot be without accountability. We, myself, with the Haitian Alliance, we've been under immense threat. I've been calling the N-word multiple times. We've been told to go to our country. And we have been told, because of the Haitian Alliance, we are the reason why Haitians and other Black immigrants and Black people continue to bring AIDS into the United States, including in Boston. We have been forced to take measures to make sure that our staff is, is, is safe. And we are working into the communities to make sure that communities in Springfield, in Boston, in, in Pennsylvania, in New York, or safe and protected. This is too dangerous. All right, then. Uh, we will uh, continue to cover this story. Uh, and actually, just hold tight one second. Let's do this here. Uh, so this is what took place on the House floor. Again, uh, there were a series of tweets that I saw literally as I was, uh, as I was before the show. Uh, and members of Congress, black members of Congress, challenged uh, Congressman Clay Higgins on the floor of the U.S. House, among them Congressman Stephen Horsford. They were challenging him about this racist tweet that he actually posted. And then uh, there were several black lawmakers around him, including Republican Congressman Byron Donalds. Not, not sure where he stood on this whole deal, but this is what took place later on the floor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I ask unanimous consent to speak before the House for one minute. Without objection, the gentleman is recognized for one minute. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Earlier today, the gentleman has withdrawn the objection. The gentleman will continue. Earlier today, a gentleman from Louisiana posted on his official X account, LOL, these Haitians are wild, eating pets, voodoo, 
nastiest country in the Western Hemisphere, cults, slapstick gangsters, but damned if they don't feel all sophisticated now, filing charges against our president and VP. All these thugs better get their mind right and their ass out of our country before January 20th. Mr. Speaker, under Rule 23, the Code of Official Conduct for the 118th Congress states that a member shall behave at all times in a manner that reflect credibly on the House. These words on an official post do not reflect credibly on the House. In fact, they are inciting hate. They are inciting fear. And because of that, it is time for this body to sp stand with one voice and to ensure that there's accountability. So I move to refer this matter to the Committee on Ethics and that we bring this member up for censure. Yes. <laughs> Does the gentleman yield back? I made a motion. There is no matter pending before the House. I made a motion based on Rule 23, point of uh, parliamentary inquiry. The gentleman is not stating a proper motion at this time. The gentleman is not stating a proper motion at this time. The motion, Mr. Speaker, may I, may I inquire. inquire under Rule 23 whether this is a violation of the official code of conduct before the House? Yes. The gentleman has not made an inquiry relevant to the current proceedings. My the motion my, is not in order. My inquiry, Mr. Speaker, thank you. May I, may I ask of the parliamentarian whether these, the Rule 23 Code of Conduct applies against the gentleman from Louisiana? The chair will not provide an advisory opinion on this matter. Uh, Mr. Speaker, point of inquiry. The gentleman will state the inquiry. Is it appropriate for a member to use their official uh, equipment in violation of Rule 23? Does the gentleman have a parliamentary inquiry? Yes. The gentleman will state the inquiry. My parliamentary inquiry is, is a member allowed to use their official equipment of the House of Representatives and platform in violation of Rule 23? Sir, this is not an issue that the chair is prepared to rule on at this time. This is a matter for the House to determine. And that is why I made the motion to refer this matter to the Committee on Ethics so that they can fully deliberate and determine whether the gentleman from Louisiana violated Rule 23 of the Code of Conduct of the House of Representatives. Sir, that is not a proper motion that's in order at this time. P point of order. P point gentleman of inquiry. will state the point of order. What is the proper motion for me to refer this matter to the Committee on Ethics? Sure, he can. Yes, he can. Sir, the chair will not issue an advisory opinion, but I advise you to take this issue up with the parliamentarian. I'm not asking, Mr. Speaker, for you to make a determination of an advisory opinion. I'm asking for the matter to be referred to the Committee on Ethics based on the violation of Rule 23, Code of Conduct before the House of Representatives. Yeah. Sir, the ruling of the chair is that that motion is not in order at this time. At what time would it be in order after someone, there, there's children who are feeling threatened in this moment based on the actions of the member from Louisiana. Uh, the chair advises the member to pursue this matter through the proper channels under Rule 9 of the House Rules. For what purpose does the gentlewoman seek recognition? I make a motion to overrule the ruling of the chair. Objection. 
The chair has not issued a ruling. Point of order, Mr. Chairman. You have made Gentlemen, a ruling. Gentlewoman will state their point of order. You have made a ruling that the gentleman's motion is not in order. And I object and disagree with that ruling, so I would like to make a motion to overrule the decision of the chair. The chair advises the gentlewoman that there was no valid motion made and therefore no ruling made that can be objected to. The chair advises members of the availability of Rule 9 under the House rules. I made a motion that this gentleman's words be stricken from the official record that he used by using official property and platform of the U.S. House of Representatives. Now that's the problem. Sir, that is not a valid motion under the House rules. M point of inquiry. The gentleman will state his point of inquiry. So the gentleman from Louisiana, had he stood on the floor of the House of Representatives and said these words on the House floor, the body would have been able to remove his words from the record. Is that not correct, Mr. Speaker? Yeah. Sir, the chair cannot respond to a hypothetical inquiry. We're going to stop with the Congress, but you do need to. Does the gentleman yield Ms. back? Mr. Speaker, it is unfortunate that on the last day of this body's work on behalf of the people, after we came together just last week in a bipartisan way to protect and to provide dignitary protection for our national party candidates, that we have a member who is choosing to use an official platform and therefore it is my intention to bring to this body a suspend. motion of censure and therefore I yield back. No, no, I move. I move to censor Representative Clay Higgins for violating Rule 9 by bringing discredit and disgrace to the House of Representatives. And I'm submitting this motion. A gentleman has not made a proper motion. A gentleman I move to censor. A enter it as a resolution. I am entering this as a resolution. Again, the chair reminds members of the availability of action under Rule 9. I am submitting by resolution a motion to censor Representative Clay Higgins for violating Rule 9 by bringing discredit and disgrace to the House of Representatives. And that is a There's an official motion, Mr. Speaker. The gentleman attempting to give notice under Rule 9? I am attempting to give notice that I intend to bring a censor motion, resolution, upon return to this House of Representatives. And I would hope that Every member of this body understands that no person, particularly those who contribute to communities, who are entrepreneurial, who give to our communities by being nurses and first responders and teachers, that those individuals, those children, no longer have to live in fear or intimidation because of any words or posts that come from members of this body. That it is time to end hate and the rhetoric of hate, and that it, 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 it is not becoming on any member to continue to push this type of rhetoric on any platform, let alone from the House of Representatives. And with that, I ask unanimous consent to accept my motion to censor Representative Clay Higgins for violating Rule 9 by bringing discredit and disgrace to the House of Representatives. An objection is heard. Now, of course, that was Congressman Stephen Horst for Chair of the Congressional Black Caucus, uh, and he was uh, referencing again uh, the, um, uh, the racist tweet 
of Louisiana Congressman uh, Clay Higgins. Now, uh, after Horsford did that, uh, then Louisiana Congressman Steve Scalise stood up and objected. Listen to what he said. It's been deleted already and removed, but I object, For to, what purpose I object to the motion. And if Gentlemen we want to go suspend. through every comment will tweet suspend. from the other side, we'll be happy to do it. Gentleman has and not been recognized. Be appalled. Does the gentleman seek recognition? For what purpose does the gentleman from Louisiana seek recognition? The gentleman is recognized. Objection, nope. sir. The objection has been heard. Pursuant to clause 12 of rule 1. The chair declares the house in recess subject to call of the chair. A recess instead of dealing with the racist comments by Clay Higgins. Now, um, uh, Speaker, uh, I'm gonna show you this here. Uh, give me one second. So Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, from Louisiana, uh, was uh, addressed this issue. And so let, let me play for you, give me a second. I'm gonna play for you what he said uh, after all of this happened. Uh, watch this. The next any, any, any comment on the tweet that Clay Higgins put out today about Haitian? I heard about that on the floor just now as well. Clay Higgins is a dear friend of mine and a colleague from Louisiana and a, a, a very uh, frank and outspoken person. He's also a very principled man. And uh, I think he tweeted, I, don't, I didn't even see it, but he tweeted something today about Haitians and uh, he was, he was, uh, he was, he, he was approached. By January 20th, okay. Well, look, he was approached on the floor by colleagues who said that was offensive. He went to the back. I just talked to him about it. He said he went to the back and he prayed about it and he regretted it and he pulled the post down. That's what you want a gentleman to do. I'm sure he probably regrets some of the language he used, but, um, you know, we move forward. We believe in redemption. If y'all want to see what's bullshit you just heard from Speaker Mike Johnson. He basically wants you to dismiss it. Oh, he went to the back, he prayed on it, he deleted, we believe in redemption. But what about the folks who have been attacked? What about the people who are fearing for their safety? What about those individuals? Uh, Jolene, go ahead. You, you, you heard all of that exchange there, and you saw how dismissive the Republican Speaker of the House and Republican Steve Scalise, both of them from Louisiana, how dismissive they are about the tweet from their racist colleague from Louisiana, Clay Higgins. For Louisiana, nonetheless, and the, the history between Louisiana and Haiti, and the history between Haiti and the United States, that, that is at the heart of it all. Uh, but th 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 that is not lost on us, Wolin, because this is how they do it. And we can pray on it as well. And we are going to fight back. So we are going to continue to pray and we're going to fight back uh, because this is unacceptable. This is cowardness for, for, for people in power to use this type of work to use this type of words. And those words were literally targeted at the Haitian Buja Alliance for standing up on behalf of the community and against those vile, vile, racist, anti-white anti uh, uh, supremacy ideologies. Those words were directly launch at Haitian Bridge Alliance, and we are not going to stand by. We will pray and we will act. All right, then. Well, we certainly appreciate you joining us uh, on today's show. Thank you so very much. We've been talking about this uh, racist tweet posted by Congressman Clay Higgins of Louisiana that have been targeting Haitian immigrants. Now, he took it down after he was confronted by black members of Congress. But this is not his first time showing how his racist comments. Listen to this. This happened in 2016. Give me one second, I'm gonna go ahead and set it up because um, when I saw this, uh, I saw a post earlier that talked about uh, Clay Higgins and so um, he's no stranger to this kind of stuff. The Gremlin Street Gang is responsible for hundreds of violent crimes 
murders, armed robberies, witness intimidation, burglaries, drug trafficking, extortion, and brutal beatings. We've arrested 10 of these thugs and have warrants on seven more. Every one of these animals is most definitely armed and dangerous. Darren Carter, Aaron Carter, Travis Cooper, Cody Guidry, Jaron Diggs, Kirkland Demache, and Jonathan Landry. We have felony warrants for your arrest. You will be hunted, you will be tracked, and if you raise your weapon to a man like me, we'll return fire with superior fire. Darren Carter, you think men like these are afraid of an uneducated 125 pound punk like you that's never won a fair fight in your life and holds your gun sideways? Young man, I'll meet you on solid ground anytime, anywhere, light or heavy. Makes no difference to me. You won't walk away. Look at you. Men like us, son, we do dumbbell presses with weights bigger than you. And the convicts in jail, most of those men are good people who just found themselves crossed with the law. They're not evil, and they don't respect you or any punk like you. They'll toss you around like a rag doll. I encourage every citizen watching this to look into your own heart and find the American courage that conquers all evil. I implore you to listen to this message and stand up. Take back your streets. Take back your country. Come forward with information about these heathens that have terrorized your community. And for those who would use this message as a way to create false racial division in our country, take a close look behind me. Standing next to every cop is a leader of our black community. This is not about race. It's about right versus wrong. One last message to the gremlins. You don't like the things I've told you tonight? I got one thing to say. I'm easy to find. On behalf of the St. Landry Parish Sheriff's Office, the Louisiana State Police, the U.S. Marshals, and every cop and law-abiding citizen from sea to shining sea, I'm Captain Clay Higgins asking every patriot to stand up, share this video, and send a clear message to the world. We're Americans. We'd rather die on our feet than live on our knees. Well, folks, uh, shortly after that, he had to resign from the sheriff's office. He said he tendered his resignation, but he was really being forced out. My panel, Joe Richardson, civil rights attorney out of L.A., Rebecca Carruthers, vice president, Fair Election Center out of D.C., Jonathan Harris, Democratic political commentator out of Los Angeles, uh, and also former Illinois Congressman uh, Joe Walsh, who joins us. Uh, he has been campaigning on behalf of Vice President Kamala Harris in Pennsylvania. Uh, Congress, I want to go to you first. We're going we're gonna, to we're talk to you about that effort there, but I had to bring you in on this. And look, you you were no stranger to saying some some wild and incendiary things when you were in Congress. You've since apologized for a lot of those comments. Uh, you have been calling out your party, especially since Donald Trump uh, has taken a hold of it. Uh, and what you see here, uh, that, that vile, disgusting tweet that Clay Higgins put up about Haitian immigrants, and he had to be forced to take down. And Speaker Mike Johnson said, oh, he's a, uh, talks about how great of a guy he is, and he's a friend, and how he prayed about it and took it down. But this goes to show you, when Trump and Vance, when they take the lead, it simply infects, causes an effect in the party and affects so many different people. Hey, Roland, good to be with you, my friend. Look, I'll, I'll be blunt. Uh, uh, coming from the right wing base like I do and coming from right wing media like I do, the cruelty, the bigotry and the fear sells. Look, sadly, it sells with the Republican Party base. They eat this up. What Clay Higgins tweeted today about Haitian migrants, the Republican Party base loves that. Uh, they, they, Republican Party leaders and right-wing media voices try to scare the hell out of their voters that there are black and brown people on their streets committing crimes to, eating your cats and dogs. It's all about scaring people and creating hate and bigotry. And Roland, look, you're right. I used to be in that world. I did more of that than I'm proud of doing. But the GOP base is now fully radicalized. They eat this up. 
Uh, you mentioned the word cruelty, and I want to go to Rebecca. Rebecca, it was Adam Sir uh, who wrote a piece in The Atlantic uh, with the headline that said, The Cruelty is the Point. President Trump and his supporters find community by rejoicing in the suffering of those they hate and fear. That's what this is. And so get the hell out by January 20th. We don't want these people here and making up the lies about them eating cats and dogs and ignoring what the city leaders are there saying, ignoring what the Republican governor of Ohio has said, ignoring what the CEOs there say, what they've said about Haitian immigrants being hard workers and, and putting in the time and showing up on time. They don't care. They are sitting here absolutely talking to their white base. And what they're doing is literally what I wrote in my book, White Fear, how the brownie of America is making white folks lose their minds. Um, I was thinking about that headline exactly. Cruelty is the point, and that's what we're seeing here. What's also ironic is even um, Trump's, um, uh, his the words he was using in Pennsylvania, the audacity of that Pennsylvania audience to smile, nod, and cheer when it was just a few years ago that three white men faced 1,400 counts of bestiality, having sex with animals in Pennsylvania in animal cruel cruelty. They were having sex with dogs. They were having sex with cows, a goat, and lots of horses. I think they got between 20 to 40 years. So wonder if the narrative became, hey, white people are sleeping with dogs and horses, right? That is irresponsible language. Um, what we've seen with these um, Haitian Americans who are in this country, I would just say for folks out there, be careful. You better leave these Haitian Americans alone because they are descendants of that 1791 to 1804 group of Haitians who demanded and fought in a revolution um, for their freedom. They were the first set of black folks in the Western Hemisphere who demanded, who fought and gained their freedom. That's who these people are. So y'all better leave them alone. Because if they show up in their numbers on, on or before November 5th, then many of these people with this very dangerous and racist um, um, language are going to get kicked out of office. You need to leave these people alone, let them live their lives because they are living their lives peacefully and they are showing that they are beneficial to the societies in which they have entered in this country. But Joe, they can't do that because what they've done is they have set up this whole thing and Trump is the ring leader. I mean, the language that he uses and it has gotten more coarse, more evil, more sadistic as the closer we get to the election. Right. Absolutely, Absolutely, Roland. And look, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, I'm gonna go to, uh, J J Joe, then I'm, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to Joe, Joe the lawyer. Then I'm gonna go to Joe Walsh. Joe, go. Good. My bad. Sorry, I forgot we had two Joes. Joe, go. Go, Joe the lawyer. <laughs> right on. Well, thank you, Joe. I appreciate it. So yeah, I mean, this is really uh, terrible and incredible. So everyone on that side of things has has a fear. Um, there are people that are driven by fear. They're motivated by fear. Sometimes very hardworking, regular folks that are just susceptible to what the former president would have to say and to what people on the far right would have to say. But there's also this larger fear of the president, the former president and his cronies. The idea that they're up against the wall, that they could actually lose. And in his actual case, he actually would have to deal with facing the music related to all of his legal issues. So what's going on is vile, it's, it's racist, uh, it's contemptible. It's interesting that in the, uh, in, in, in the congressional session, the one that was overseeing his speaker is Jay Obernolte, who we're trying to overthrow uh, as we speak here with uh, Derek Marshall in this area. But they're gonna do everything that they can because they're fearful, not because things aren't changing, but because things are. So we have to remember that. I'm glad that they've brought uh, this, citizens, this citizen complaint. Uh, we have something going there. We will see what kind of, uh, what, what kind of uh, 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 fuel that it, that, it re that it resolves. But I am with uh, Rebecca in that you can never question the people that are on the right side of things. They find energy, they find vigor. Uh, and I believe that there's plenty of good people in this country that will stand with uh, the folks, the Haitian immigrants that are here legally, that are being uh, treated the way that they are, whose kids are scared to go to school, whose moms and dads are scared to go to work. Um, we do believe that there's a brighter day coming, but you have to go through what you go through in the meantime. And it's really terrible that it's happening this way. But 
I do believe that there will be an end and a successful end for those that are on the right side. Joe Walsh. Just quickly, I come from the Republican Party base. The Republican Party base is primarily middle-aged and older white folk. And as we've all said for years, they've been concerned, scared, and angry about all these changes in life. I believe generally they're good people, but demagogues, I mean, the world I come from, Fox News and right-wing media and Donald Trump and Tucker Carlson and J.D. Vance, they demagogue and try to scare the hell out of these people. That's what they're doing. Uh, Trump's got to lose, but then after Trump loses, we've got to reach out and grab these people and, and, and try to welcome and bring them back into the world of truth. Um, Jonathan, uh, this was a couple of weeks ago. This is, the, this is the director of the Texas Department of Public Safety, Steve McCraw. This is the language that he used in a news conference. Listen. I mean, somebody can find it harsh using the term, you know, infestation and cockroaches and things like that. All you have to do is interview or spend some time with some victims some migrant victims that are here in this country. And you'll understand that, that the governor has not overstated the issue. In fact, he has well stated the issue. And Texas is not going to allow any part of this state to be infested with that type of disease. He is literally, he is literally saying cockroaches, disease. This is the director of the Texas Department of Public Safety. Uh, Texas... Uh, I mean, the, the Texas Rangers, now the baseball team, they are considered the creme de la creme of law enforcement in Texas. They fall under Texas DPS. This is the leader. You, you know, I, one of the things that I, I can say about uh, Donald Trump's sort of ascending in politics, if anything good came from it, is it sort of pulled the veil back on this sort of idea that we have moved beyond all of the racism that has been inf infesting this country uh, since its inception. It, there's never, it's from the time he ascended, there's now never been a way to say, oh, this isn't actually happening. I mean, I remember when he was running in, in 2015 and 2016, and even Paul Ryan, and I mean, if Paul Ryan has to be the voice of reason in your party, something's wrong, said that his comments about a Mexican judge were, quote, textbook racism. Um, and, and I've said, you know, I spend most of my time on conservative media, on Fox News, Newsmax, et cetera. And one of the things that I've said even there is that Democrats have a horrifically bad messaging problem. You have Donald Trump is at this point with J.D. Vance running what I would say is an overtly racist campaign. It's not a dog whistle anymore. It's not Reagan talking about the welfare queen. It's not going, you know, Nixon and his war against drugs. This is an overtly racist campaign. And the Democrats need to call it that they need to call it exactly what it is call out his history of doing this, highlight other members of the Republican Party's history of doing this, and put the Republican Party on the defensive and make them have to defend themselves and separate themselves from this rhetoric. But what I feel like the Democrats do very often is they just sort of let the Republicans run the narrative and kind of sit back on the sidelines. And it's like, they need to be proactive about picking this up and calling it what it is. Don't tiptoe around it. It is just another example of overt racism. And that is the only thing that Donald Trump has to campaign on. He doesn't have a record to campaign on. So it's just racism. In 2016, Donald Trump said he would choose only the best people to work in his White House. Now those people have a warning for America. Trump is not fit to be president again. Here's his vice president. Anyone who puts himself over the Constitution should never be president of the United States. It should come as no surprise that I will not be endorsing Donald Trump this year. His defense secretary. Do you think Trump can be trusted with the nation's secrets ever again? No. I mean, it's just irresponsible action that places uh, our service members at risk, places our nation's security at risk. His national security advisor. Donald Trump will cause a lot of damage. The only thing he cares about is Donald Trump. And the nation's highest ranking military officer. We don't take an oath to a king or a queen or a tyrant or a dictator. And we don't take an oath to a wannabe dictator. Take it from the people who knew him best. Donald Trump is a danger to our troops and our democracy. We can't let him lead our country again. I'm Kamala Harris and I approve this message.